This is the multiple regression video on correlated predictors. It's a brief discussion of what can go wrong with highly correlated predictors. Multi-predictor modeling is designed to work well in the case where the predictors are uncorrelated, which will probably only happen in lab experiments, or moderately correlated, but not when the correlations among the predictors are extremely high. When your predictors are perfectly correlated, you'll probably receive an error message or some sort of warning from your software. And the output will look something like what you'll see on the next slide. When the correlations are dangerously high but less than one, you probably won't receive any warning. If you're unsure of the magnitude of the correlations, fit a regression line among the predictors and check the R-squared. What this output is trying to tell you is that X3 was perfectly correlated with one or more of the other predictors in the model. For example, X3 might be a summary score that's obtained by adding X1 and X2, and thus is redundant once X1 and X2 are included in the model. What gives away the problem is that no regression coefficient is calculated, nor a standard error, nor a p-value. In fact, if we look elsewhere in the ANOVA table, you'll find that there aren't any degrees of freedom attached to X3. If the correlations among your predictors are very high, but not so high as to be redundant, your software probably won't provide you with any warning. This slide illustrates what to look for. Here X2 and X3 are highly correlated, and the giveaway is the high standard error for the regression coefficients. One implication of highly correlated predictors is it's easy to underestimate their importance. In the previous slide, the regression coefficients for both X2 and X3 had high standard errors, so neither will be statistically significant. Well, that makes sense since the partial regression coefficient measures the impact of that predictor after accounting for the other predictors in the model. Thus, the regression coefficient for X2 has little to add after considering the impact of X3 and vice versa. To determine the actual impact of these two predictors, you'd have to drop them both and see what happens.